on this episode of Lapeef Let's Talk. It's a lot of work that's got to be done. Stop trying to pay attention to every little small details, the words, the words we using, the tone we using, the delivery. Who gives a damn about that? What about the message? The message is constantly getting lost all the time because we're not paying attention to it. When are we going to change? When are we going to hold ourselves accountable? When are women going to hold other women accountable? We're not speaking to the minority. We're speaking to the majority. Mm -hmm. A lot of times uh, there are exceptions, but y'all want to highlight the exceptions. Highlight the majority because mm -hmm. that's who we're trying to change. Y'all agree? All right, you guys. Welcome to Kevin Samuels to the show. My apologies, Kevin Samuels to the show. How you hey, doing, Kevin? How you doing, hey, how you doing? Good. I'm good. What's going so, on? Man? Uh, I'm just, I'm just kind of getting caught up. I mean, I heard some of the first parts, um, and then I, uh, and it kind of transitioned off of talking about black men and men needing to get caught up and do better. And what I'm think I'm hearing is that, you know. Courtney was saying, when are we going to look at women specifically? Um, mm -hmm. But what I do want to speak about black men, because I, I think that one sister, what's her name? A, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Uh, Ariel. It's Ariel. Ariel. Okay. You mentioned that, uh, that high value, when we talk about a certain strata of black men, that they're doing okay, but the average black man ain't doing too good. Um. Where, where and where did that come from? I don't think it's the average black man. I do believe there is a gap. I do believe that there is men that are doing well and men that are doing are not doing so well. Um, so where there is, the is where is the gap? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. Well, would you be surprised? Would you believe if I told you that, uh, according to the AEI Institute, American Enterprise Institute, black men make it in America, 54% of black men are single and childless, and 65% are in the middle class? I think black men are doing it. pretty damn well. Yeah, okay. I would believe that. Yeah. I, I, I mean, over the last 20 years, any gap between black men and black women is, has substantially shrank on the men's side. Uh, black men especially in my generation, have closed the gap substantially. Uh, and Sister Shaharazad Ali tried to bring this point up back in 1989 that everyone else in this country has had their behavior analyzed uh, six ways from Sunday except Black women. And we're still resistant of looking at Black women solely. So if we had to ask the question, why is the average Black woman where she is today without blaming men? Could we have that conversation? I don't, I don't think we could. Mm -mm. Because when I typically hear something from women, it's always tied back into a, 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 into a man. Um, and black men have had to be, have our stuff scrutinized. Somebody said that uh, black men aren't holding each other to task. Uh, and I'm like, I don't understand what you're talking about. The, the black manosphere is, is that's what it exists solely, but then do we give it the credit it, it, it deserves or do we just dismiss it as YouTube and social media? I'm sorry, I feel, I feel like that's coming towards me. So you're, you're asking, I, I'm sorry, you're asking if, so I didn't say that uh, black men aren't being held to task. I actually advocate that while I think you're doing the work, I think you're having an important conversation with the sisters right now. And what I consistently say is that while you're doing the work, that doesn't absolve us on working on ourselves to become the best version of ourselves. So my statement, okay. around, my statement around the black manosphere in particular, I said, if that's what we've reduced, having physical interaction with men in our cipher, being able to check us, hold us accountable, we got a long ways to go. If well, that's, not, fully, that's, if, not, that's not what it's reduced to. That's just an avenue. But the first thing I came mm -hmm. in leading with was how black men have checked themselves and mm -hmm. improved their situation over the last 20 years. 
Kevin, that is, a, a that is a documented report. I mean, I put the I put the stats, I put the report in the chat room earlier. So anybody who wants to go look at the study can look at it themselves. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I have a question. Um, so I stated earlier where I do look at the manosphere of trying to understand what men want me, you know, wanting to become a wife. And I look to the manosphere. I stated you and O'Shea Du Jackson, MTR, Anton. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, a, a plethora of poor man's podcast. Mm -hmm. And on this, I got laughed at. I got laughed right. at because it was like, well, that's not real research. But what I stated, what men have a space and a safe space of speaking their mind and any woman that deems or wants to be married would take it to heed and feel like it's important. So, and then I got laughed at. Well, well, well I, but the things I don't, how many people actually watch these podcasts before you say it's not real or it's, it's, it's funny because when I'm on these podcasts, we, we, these are some well-read learned men. I mean, mm -hmm. I've been, I've been a black man for a long time. And I would say that if, if you, anybody knows the name BGS Ibmore, probably one of the most intelligent men I've ever met. And that man came from, well, I don't, anyway, um, YouTube or not, two plus two is four. And if black men are improving themselves, can we honestly say that uh, we do we disagree that black men are doing better off than they were even just 20 years ago? Do not disagree. All right. Are black women doing better off than they were 20 years ago? We are not. And so at what point, see, if this is triage, at what point do we go to the, 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 the part that's most problematic to the woman that's not. But here's the thing, Kevin. I feel like I'm I'm saying that, but even with the two ladies, it's like, are you able to agree with it? Like we have to be at a, a point where it's like yes, and it's not a but to negate it. We are not doing better. I'm able to admit that. I just don't feel like I hate the feel. I know. That well, other women are not are saying it out loud and specifically and taking accountability for what we need to take care of ourselves. Well, well, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to um, say. So my initial comment earlier in um, the podcast was kind of just like looking at it from a male's the only the male's perspective and seeing what the reasons where they were not getting married. I am fully in agreement that women have dropped the ball in terms of how to behave ladylike. The idea of submission is so scary to women at this point that it is like saying a curse word. Like it's that mm -hmm. bad. Um, and as a result, the black family has deteriorated. Um, so I am completely in agreement with you. Um, it's just hard to view things in a vacuum in general. Well, um, submission, how about this? Two weeks ago, I had one of the most contentious podcasts I've ever had just on black mm -hmm. women having being offended to smile at black men. Smile. Mm -hmm. So before we can get to submission, I just got off in Instagram talking about cooperation and being right. And I don't think that many modern, many black women understand how far they are from black men. Mm -hmm. Submission, black men are just trying to get human treatment. Mm. Now, if you go look at that podcast, uh, it was right on the heels of Iyana Van Zant announcing she's leaving the own network. She's being run off of Oprah Winfrey's network by who? Black women. women. Mm -hmm. Because of her unflinching portrayals of their behavior. 2013 on Black Female Madame Noir, she said Black women are out of order. And on the way out the door, she says we're still out of order because we're getting paid to be out of order. Mm -hmm. I did a broadcast talking about, hey, just simple human treatment. And I, I challenge anyone to go look at it. It's all cut up. Two of those videos are on Worldstar. Mm -hmm. One woman said she actually finds it offensive when Black men ask her to smile. So submission, if you can't even get the average man, the average man 
cannot even get a black woman to treat him like a person. Do we do we believe that, or do you think that's an exaggeration? Oh, I believe it. I don't know my counterparts do. I'll give an example of, have you gone to the post office or, or, or anywhere and you'll see a black woman who's a teller or, and the line is everybody she greets and says hello to, but when the black man comes up, her instant frown, mm -hmm. no greeting. The disconnect between black women and black men is severe. And it's not as though black men don't want to be with black women. That's the whole genesis of my show. Black men, men in general, black men in particular, saying they are doing the work to become the best version of themselves, showing their work, getting out there, putting in the 60 plus hours a week they're getting paid for, getting in the gym, networking with other men, showing their work. And then they're coming back saying, uh, where, where are my counterparts? Why? I can't even get it. She don't even want to smile at me, be nice to me. She thinks that I should have to take her at 185, 200 pounds. It, we have to start looking at the women themselves, not why the women are doing it and holding men accountable. So I would love to be a part of a conversation with, where women, I would love to hear women have a conversation as to why black women are single today without blaming black men. But I don't think we'll ever have that conversation because um, that would be, that would require a lot of accountability. Mm -hmm. I got a question yeah, for you, yeah. Kev. So a lot of what I see today on social mm -hmm. media, on different platforms, so on and so forth, from women in general, I see them, it seems as though they're they're even more mad at women that may more closely align with that narrative or perspective than they are at even the men that yes. may have a narrative or perspective. Why do you yeah. think that there's there's so much more angry at the women that may have had that perspective than the men? Well, just like Iyana Van Zant, they basically counseled us because they're going to because you're going against what is called the sisterhood. sisterhood. You're going against the sisterhood, and that's really what's at the top of the black community: the matriarchy. It is about black women going for black women above all else. <clears throat> and as long as you're on the sisterhood side, it's okay. But if you speak against the sisterhood, as a man will cancel or destroy you, but as a woman, it's a double foul because you know where all the bones are buried. And you mm. speak with more credibility because in our community, it is easy for black women to discount anything that comes out of black man's mouth. Doesn't matter who he is. He can be a PhD, a physicist, or on the corner. But when it comes out of a woman's mouth, uh, it's, it, it, it hurts more because they're like, damn. You're, it's like you're betraying them. But why? But what group has ever got anywhere with women leading, with women on top? Nowhere. We're progressively going towards the bottom. And what's happening in the black community is not working. And if we have a working model and we really say we want better outcomes, this is what I hear from a lot of black women. I want to be married. I want better outcomes. I want this. I want that. But then ask the question, do you want to be under the, the, uh, 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 do you want to be under the authority of a black man? And more than anything else, I want to be a partner. Mm -hmm. yep. Co-CEOs. That won't work. Why, why do you think that that won't work? I, I think that it won't work either. And I actually spoke on this a little bit earlier. But what's your perspective towards women that want partners um, when it is well, that they're when they're looking for relationships? Well, because somebody's because we're different. Men and women are different. Men's first instinct is cor uh, to to correct and discipline. A woman's first instinct is to nurture. And here's the thing. If you have a biological child with a woman, she can't pull biological rank on you. And if you say, mm -hmm. I, this is what should happen with our, our, our son. I want to go right. She wants to go left. A decision has to be made. And, and not making a decision is a decision. Who leads? Who decides to stop fighting in the direction we go down? And see, when you're equally yoked, when it's two people, you can stay sitting in the middle lane. I mean, people watch The Karate Kid. 
Everybody. Right there was a whole line. Cross the, cross the street, stay on one corner, safe. Cross the street, safe. Go to middle road, get squished. We keep going to this middle co-partner equality situation and it doesn't get us anywhere. Because at the end of the day, when, when black women are truly able to say it, they don't have faith in the leadership or the abilities of black men. And some of it comes from what they were raised in program, but, um, but when you start to see the men step into their position. And also, there's another dark side of it. A lot of black women don't want to give up power. They got power. They mm -hmm. like power. Power is seductive. Power, mm -hmm. and if you know anything about power, power uh, uh, does, it requires a, a more power. You're not going to get someone to give it up. If you got power and privilege, what's the argument they're going to give them to give it up? It's going to have to be taken. Yeah, I have a question too. Um, so I think I listen to you a lot, and one thing that you've made very clear is that you know, one thing women have to do is hold women accountable. And yes. what's important is that when women that has gotten it wrong or at a specific age that can help younger women, that they'll those are the ones that need to speak up. And so for me and being on this platform, I feel like that's what I am trying to do at some kind of level that was an admitted homewrecker, um, mm -hmm. but are really trying to say, hey, ladies, you know, be better than me. I did it wrong. I wasted time, you know, do better. But then the pushback is not, you know, it's some men, but it's the women that I get pushback from. And it's the women that won't. Um, and I know you you know this too. They're not going to negate what you're saying because what you're saying is honest. What they would do is try to look at your life and nitpick that and how you're wrong. It's that homonym. It's against the man, against the woman. Yeah. It's the easiest way to dis, you know discredit. Well, when we don't like the when we don't like what's coming out of somebody's mouth, we mm -hmm. question the veracity of the speaker. You know, yeah. I, I've had some, I've had women sit around talking about, oh, I don't like what he says, and then sit there and try to go into how they think I look. And I'm like, you've got a, you're, you're in disguise from head to toe mm -hmm. talking about how I look. But yeah. that's a reflection. <laughs> See, what we actually need is we need a tipping point of 10%. You don't need a hundred percent of anything. You need 10%. What we need is women who are, See, it's typical. We need we need um, feminine women to put their boxing gloves on. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the problem. Many mm -hmm. feminine women don't want mm -hmm. to deal with the conflict because it goes against their feminine nature. Mm -hmm. All right. However, just like you have would go into your mother strength to protect your young, mm -hmm. you need to somehow link that into the feminine nature so they can push back against their. Uh, "Quote unquote masculine counterparts." Um, there's a there's a net was a Netflix called Miss America. Um, Betty Verdan versus Phyllis Schlafly at the ERA movement of the '60s, and it was traditional white women going against the ERA, the liberal feminists, and that was a good example of women standing up for traditional values versus women standing up for feminist principles. Um, there, there has to, there's going to come a time where the women you're talking about, Courtney, they're going to have to get their hands dirty because the women that push back, do all this other kind of stuff, they have power, they have microphones, and they don't mind getting dirty. Yeah. They don't mind getting dirty, they don't mind getting in the mud. And unless you get at least, you know, if they're nine over here and they're three on your side, that's a hell of a lot more than when there's just one on your side, you don't feel alone. So it's, that's what it's really going to be required. That's why I say women are going to have to start standing up. And what we're trying to do is have these conversations in good faith to where get women who may not be as hardened on either side, something along the line of a middle ground. Mm -hmm. You know, I mentioned this earlier this week. As, the, as I could progress my platform, I'm going to start having broader discussions to have middle ground to where it's like, all right, can we at least agree on something, a starting point for something? Because it's politics. We're going to have mm -hmm. to win men and women over to middle ground. And that means everybody's going to have to give up something for a greater goal. Um, that's we, We've got the blueprints. 
We just have to have the courage and conviction and 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 the, and the desire to fight. Do you think that it's even possible, honestly, to um, to a larger extent even have a conversation, let alone convince somebody to come to the table in good faith that truly do not want to give up that power? They don't want to subscribe to the idea or even consider the possibility that we may be right. They don't even want to even come to the conversation in good faith outside of debating, right? Mm -hmm. They they just want to be heard. Do you yeah. think that it's even possible for those type of, of people or women and some men even to a larger extent to well, even really make that transition? Uh, I look at, look at what the Tea Party was able to accomplish mm -hmm. and look at what the LGBT community was able to accomplish in a mm -hmm. short period of time. They focused on the people that they could focus on, but they worked and did it. They had a grassroots movement of, of, of people who were invested. Look, it is not going to be possible to win the argument with 100% of the people. All you need is 10%. It's a tipping point. Um, and I think one of the biggest one of the biggest things I learned in sales was when somebody was saying no or when they were actually having a request for information. When I could find that somebody was saying no and they weren't going to buy, I would just shut it off and go on because I don't want to waste time with someone who's got their mind made up. Somebody's got their mind made up. Let them stand outside and change their mind, if ever, at their own accord. But here's the thing. Everybody wants to be on the winning side. Mm -hmm. When stuff starts happening, when stuff starts working, when, when black women are starting to get outcomes that they want and black men are starting to get outcomes that they want, it'll start happening over in that 10% side. And strangely enough, that if anybody ever been to, been to college, they're like, oh, I can't stand them capitals or them alphas or them AKAs or them so-and-so. But everybody couldn't stand your ass, but they always wanted to go to the most lit party and they found their own <laughs> party no matter how much they hated your ass. Mm. Same thing. So mm. let Same me thing. ask you this, uh, uh, Kevin. So this is an honest question. With the brothers, because again, I believe the conversation that you having with the sisters right now. I've, I've, I'm up to speed on all your videos, the, the things your father should have taught you and to rank yourself as a man. Those are my top two personally, right? But what do the brothers need to work on as the women are having this conversation? Is it a simultaneous uh, thing happening or is it all focused on the women and the brothers are straight? Well, no, I could never say that. Mm -hmm. uh, the black men need to make them. Black men needs to work on black male media run by black men for black men. Mm. We have to look at our own image. I mean, I'm going to use, I don't want to use the word because I want to ding the platform. But if you go back to World War II Germany, they were able to do some horrific things through the media and propaganda. Mm -hmm. A lot has been done to the black community through media and propaganda. We don't control our own images, black men. Black women have more access to the levers of media power than we do. We need that run by us for us. Because when we run our own black male media for us by us, that's an economy. That's an economy mm -hmm. that spawns off into other things. That's an economy that spawns off into, if you want to sell into the black community, you have to go through black male media. Uh, that also goes into, and that branches off into advertising, media buys, banking, all other kinds of things. Black men have to go for power. And the biggest power is our image was taken from us in 1915, D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation. And we have yet to get it back. We've yet to get it back. And now social media has come along, online media has come along, and it's democratized the airwaves. You don't have to go through the FCC, such and so forth. What we put on our Instagram, our TikToks, our Facebooks, our YouTubes as black men, as we're using that to launch and go into our own endeavors matters. This is why these kind of things are important. This is why when I talk about I don't beef, um, but we're going to have to, if Tyler Perry has Tyler Perry Studios down here, right? He's employing mm -hmm. hundreds of black people in a billion dollar business. Black men need their Tyler Perry Studios from a power black men men side first. But see, being a male affiliated does not mean being anti-female. I think it's the ultimate being pro-female because it gives women a choice. Mm -hmm. Gives them a choice to actually deal with men who are out for the best outcomes of their people, just like every other group of people on the planet, 
uh, or working in the greater system at large. So no, I'll never say the pressure needs to be on for men. Um, that that no, we got to fight everybody else. We just got to stop. We just got to stop being at war with our women. Yeah. So I got a question. So <laughs> I know that you stand on, and even to a larger extent, you went into um, you went into a deeper conversation about it on on Joe Button's platform where you were talking about the fact that you don't even entertain the idea of when guys, when people say negative things about you, especially guys, mm -hmm. right? I personally struggle with that a little bit more than you in that, you know, because I have a platform, I'm willing to take whole guys accountable, even though I want the best for them, right? The intentions mm -hmm. a lot of times don't necessarily align with the actions. So my, my question then becomes, how do you, because you practically the hottest dude on the internet right now. How do you mm -hmm. keep yourself above the fray and that you're mm -hmm. very supportive of, of the different platforms and the people that actually align with you or are rocking with you, but at the same time, you don't entertain or you don't you don't mm -hmm. deal yeah. with to a larger extent about me. that actually have negativity mm -hmm. to say mm -hmm. about you. It ain't about me. Mm -hmm. It ain't about me. Um, I, the trip that I, I went to L.A., and I was reluctant. I, I didn't want to go to that trip. I went anyway. And the going to LA, I had that podcast where I took a call that went super mega viral over a weekend. If you look at uh, World Star Hip Hop, most videos do around 150 to 300,000 views. When that video surpassed 300,000 views in, in half a day, that stopped being about me. That captured a moment in time where people around the country, black folks were sitting around having discussions about this. So because I happened to be running the platform, I recognized that this is much larger than me. And I am representing men who have never been able to have a voice. So I'm cognizant of how I speak. Even though when I talk about high value men, you notice how I always mention my average, my blue collar brothers and this and that, something and so forth, because it ain't about me. Now, mm -hmm. make no mistake, I don't necessarily like it, but I understand that also this is new information, a new way of looking at things for a lot of people. And it's shocking. It's hard to hear. But more often than not, People will say, you know what? When I first heard you, I couldn't stand you. But when you start to hear more women say, well, now that I watched you and I heard what you had to say in your own voice, I love what you're saying, even men. And I'm more content that that will happen in a larger numbers than people who just hate you and want to cancel you. When I'm out and, out and about, I have more black men walking up to me saying, thank you. I've had black men damn near in tears. Mm -hmm. Didn't you know what I mean? So, not even know how to even say thank you. So uh, it ain't easy. I tell you that. Sometimes it really ain't, especially some of the egregious stuff. But again, it's the same stuff. How many more times they going to call me gay, uh, yeah. download, hate his mama? I mean, it's, it's the same stuff. I mean, it's the same eight or nine insults. I was like, all right, haha. -ha. And eventually mm -hmm. you get to a point where you start laughing at it. Like when comedians and stuff meme you, you got to <laughs> take that. You don't want to argue with no damn comedian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, you don't want that kind of problem. Hey, you don't want those kind of problems. You let us, you let it ride because more often than not, if somebody really has good intentions or better intentions for the outcome of folks, we may not have to like one another, agree, but if we can agree on at least some things to help us move further, I'll take that. But uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I definitely appreciate you. And I definitely want to say that I thank you because, you know, me really trying to put in the work, but listening to you, you made the dots connect. And, uh, and that's the thing. we all got, mm -hmm. we, we all have to decide what we want to do in this and everybody's role is a little different. Uh, yeah. My goal is to try to expand this out past the personality of one, bring more men into this men who disagree with me. Um, but it's it's one thing for women to see men who agree and disagree in real time, work it out and move the move the thing needle forward. Mm -hmm. Women follow men who are getting shit done. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge as men. We got to get shit done. We can disagree, but we we better disagree down the goddamn road. 
That's always going to be the same thing with me. It's always about the work. You can say whatever the hell you want to about mm -hmm. me, but you're going to be saying it to my back because I'm going down the goddamn road. Folk like, for the doctor. The like how about we get straight to the point? Rilla, like, do you feel like women need to be held accountable? Of course. More. I've said that. I, okay. So conversation. You know, that's the work right there. Women need to be held accountable more. That's what Rilla is saying. You know, I, I'm going to speak on this. So like how I look at it is I appreciate Kevin Samuels, a lot of other platforms, including ourselves. We're just different voices saying similar things because everybody's not going to get it. Somebody may listen to Kevin Samuels and they might not get it, but mm -hmm. come over here and listen and they might get it. Mm -hmm. I appreciate all the work that's been done. Well, we got to focus on the point. Women need to be held accountable. Men need to do the work. Men need to focus more on the work and not the women. We all preaching the same message, just in different ways. So we can't, you know, we going back and forth in circles. But I think that we all saying, and it's basically saying the same thing. If 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 Rilla is saying that women need to be held accountable, then he's then he's agreeing with what we saying. Who's holding these women mm -hmm. accountable? Women do need to work. Men do want to be married. Men men are being emotional, too emotional out here. Men not doing the work. So I think we all speaking the same message, but we just got to keep, we just got to keep doing it. We're not going to reach everybody. And I appreciate it. Appreciate all the different perspectives. I appreciate really how he says it. Anton Courtney for the women, you know, people always question why Courtney on the platform is because there are not too many women that speak like Courtney. If you really listen, like a lot of people don't listen. And I use B Nix for example, B Nix was on the show and B Nix said, you know what? When I listen to, Kevin Samuels background, I got a little bit more insight. Like I like what he's, what he's saying, you know, his background, you know, how he grinded out. But mm -hmm. if you just hear bits and pieces of it, you, it's like, you don't understand his story. Just like Courtney, you don't know Courtney's story. I've heard more about Courtney's story and I have an understanding to it, but you guys have to hear the message. You gotta, you gotta think past what you're hearing right there. There's a message in all of us. Stop discrediting people. Stop taking sides without listening to somebody. It's a lot of us right now, especially in the black community, that are just listening to respond. Mm -hmm. I had this conversation with my son. He's 16. Mm -hmm. I had this conversation with him all the time. He's saying the butt in there. ain't just the women. So there's a lot of men doing the same exact thing. We listening to respond because we want to speak more than we want to listen. That's the problem that plagues us right now. What are we going to do about it? How long is this going to keep happening like this? We have to grow. That's the point of this podcast and everything else out there. It's not about the drama. It's not about uh, this, that, and the third. We got to do better collectively. We got to change. We got to want to change. How bad do you... Do you want to see change? Do you want to grow? If you've been getting the same results all this time and you, and you don't see nothing different or, or you don't like it, the problem is you. It's not everybody else. When are we going to stop pointing the finger? We point the finger all the time. It's always somebody else. It's not everybody else. Sometimes it's us. It's a lot of work that's got to be done. Stop trying to Pay attention to every little small details, the words, the words we using, the tone we using, the delivery. Who gives a damn about that? What about the message? The message is constantly getting lost all the time because we're not paying attention to it. When are we going to change? When are we going to hold ourselves accountable? When are women going to hold other women accountable? We're not speaking to the minority. We're speaking to the majority. Mm -hmm. A lot of times uh, there are exceptions, but y'all want to highlight the exceptions, highlight the majority, because mm -hmm. that's who we trying to change. Y'all agree? I'm with you, Jr. Hey, man, I never shot you down when you preach preaching good, bro. I never shot you yeah, down. He just, he just did a sermon. Excuse me. That's a collection player.